What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Keeping Up with the Commanders. Uh, we are back after a three week break, a four week break, I think. Um, I was sick again, and then last week I was going to upload, I recorded a podcast, but then it just didn't feel right after the DeMar Hamlin injury on Monday night. So now here we are, Keeping Up with the Commanders, episode 20, the season review, season recap. Um, it was definitely the worst case scenario in terms of season. If you are a commanders fan, uh, close to the playoffs, did not get into the playoffs, finished the season at eight eight and one. So I believe Ron Rivera now is the first head coach ever to finish a season with a 500 record during a 17 game season, which is, um, uh, uh, definitely an accomplishment to say the least. Um, again, yeah, Commanders missed the playoffs. 16th overall pick we're going to be picking in the 2023 NFL draft as of now. Again, things could change. We could trade up. We could trade down. Um, if we go after a quarterback like a, De- a Derek Carr or a, a Lamar Jackson, that pick could be gone before the um before the draft comes around in April. So we'll just have to wait and see. But right now sitting at number 16, it's where Washington picked ended up picking at least in the last draft. Again, we were our number 11 in last year's draft and then we traded back five picks, picked up an extra third and I believe two fifths or maybe two thirds or something like that, but um yeah. Or maybe a second. I don't really know, but we picked up some picks and we moved back five spots, ended up taking Jahan Dotson, but I'll get to that later on. First, uh, just some advanced stats are here. Um, 28th in offensive DVOA, the commanders finished, which is fourth worst in the NFL, which is not great. They had the fourth worst rushing DVOA and seventh worst pass DVOA. So again, the advanced stat metrics, um, not really giving Washington any credit here. Um, and I don't blame them on terms of the offense, at least. Defensively, though, things were a little bit different. Washington was a top 10 defense or ended up becoming a top 10 defense, even with some big injuries to Benjamin St. Juice throughout the year. Chase Young not playing for pretty much the entire season up until the final month. Uh, Jonathan Allen missed um, the last game and some other injuries that we had over the course of the entire season. Cam Curl was off and on. Um, I can really go on and on. Cole Holcomb didn't play for like half the season after a season-ending injury. So a top 10 defense, uh, you got to give props to Jack Del Rio where it's due. And um, that was a pretty good job by him, ninth in defensive DVOA. As for the special teams, continuing to be a top 10 special teams in the um, NFL, which is great, seventh in special teams DVOA, which is uh, amazing. Tressway doing his thing. Joey Sly, he was pretty much doing his thing uh, throughout the entire season until this last game in the win against the uh, Cowboys, which... I guess we can start getting into that one. Um, Sam House performance, 11 of 19, 169 yards, two total touchdowns and an interception, one passing touchdown, one rushing touchdown. He did pretty good. He did pretty good, uh, to say the least. I think I was definitely impressed. Um, He showed flashes, which is what I wanted. And again, there's still things to work on. The interception in the end zone, inside the own 15, uh, inside the red zone. And... um, and Sam Howell throws it into the back of the end zone, triple covered. Uh, I don't blame him. Again, looking back at the play, um, it seemed open for a second. But, again, you still can't throw that if your Howell uh, ends up being an easy pick. I forgot who picked it on the Cowboys. But uh, ends up being an easy pick there. Defensively for this team, well, that was incredible. Um, not a single Cowboys rusher had over 20 rushing yards. Not Tony Pollard. Not Ezekiel Elliott. Sam Howell had more rushing yards than every single Cowboys rusher, which is just an insane stat, uh, as Howell had, I think, five carries for 35 yards in that touchdown. So um, that's just insane. Uh, The defense, which was very depleted, no Jonathan Allen, like I said earlier. Um, Chase Young still a little bit banged up. Pretty much zero linebackers. We had Milo Eifler in there. We had uh, no Jamin Davis in there. We had no Cole Holcomb. Uh, I believe no John Bostic either. So... Our defense was pretty pretty much banged up. Um, you have the seventh round rookie Christian Holmes in there uh, at the corner spot. He was starting, I believe, and then Percy Butler as well um, was off and on in that Buffalo nickel role or switching out uh, with Derek Forrest there, which is uh, pretty cool to see. Um, also at the corner, I got to give a shout out to Danny Johnson who had a spectacular uh, game, which is great to see. I 
love what our uh, cornerback staff is doing with our defensive backs because I feel like we keep on getting these steals in the later rounds, and they turn out to be some pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good defensive backs, which is great. And um, as I don't really like spending high picks on corners, I feel if you can get some okay value guys, I would rather spend it on a pass rusher or um, an offensive tackle or something because I just think there's so many corners that are good enough to start in the NFL. But, hey, um, we'll probably, we'll probably end up selecting another cornerback in the first round this year. So not really much I can do about that. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for the Cowboys game. 26-6 win. Um, Sam Howell played great. And we got a worse draft pick. So, again, pluses and minuses there. Uh, so, yeah, let's just get into um, the good of the season. So, I want to do the good and I want to do the bad. So, starting off with the good, again, there was so much stuff off the field. Uh, I don't really want to get into all of that. So, I'm just going to stick with stuff that is on the field. Starting with the rookies, Jahan Dotson, 35 catches, 523 yards, 7 touchdowns in 12 games played. Just an incredible rookie season from him for the um, circumstances around his injury and everything, his time off and stuff. So uh, I, I really like what he put up. He's not going to be offensive player of the year or offensive rookie of the year, sorry, but um, a great, a great performance. And he's turning out to really be a big time red zone threat uh, inside the 20 yard line. Moving on to Brian Robinson, missed the first few games of the season, came back, 205 attempts, 797 yards on the ground with two touchdowns. He also fumbled it twice as well. He needs to keep a little bit um, hands on the ball a little bit more, I feel. I uh, did fumble twice, but besides that, uh, I think he needs to become a little bit more of an efficient runner too. I'm not sure that's because of the offensive line being where it's at right now or just him and himself, but I do want to see another jump for Brian Robinson into next season and into the 2023-2024 season. Because right now he's good, but I think next year he can be great if he just puts in some more work over the summer and over the off season. And for the final guy I want to highlight, Sam Howell. I talked about him a little bit already, but he had a great performance against the Dallas Cowboys. And I don't really know where I stand on him right now. I'll probably get into it as we have a long off season ahead of us. But I like where things are standing right now with Sam Howell. I'll just say that. And we go to the other rookies as well. Percy Butler, the fourth round pick. Christian Holmes, the seventh round pick. Those are the two defensive back guys. Chris Paul, I believe he was the sixth round pick. Uh, he played in the, he, I think he started in the game against the Cowboys. I've not looked at the film yet though. So uh, I'll probably get into that at some point in this offseason too. So we'll see how he plays. And then I do want to mention Fidarian Mathis, the second round pick. Um, he tore his ACL week one. And so next year will pretty much be his technic, uh, not technically, but it'll pretty much be like his rookie season. So that'll be interesting to see going to next year and how much he's progressed over the offseason coming off of that torn ACL back, I believe, on the second drive of the season or the first drive of the season, which is just horrible. So, yeah, I just want to point that out. Also, another thing that was good, um, Terry McLaurin for surpassing 1,000 yards for the second straight season. I mean, he is really just like... He, he is special, that's that's for sure. Over a 1,000 yards. I forgot how many touchdowns, but he just had another great year, especially with the quarterback circumstances. Three different quarterbacks playing for Washington this season. Um, and then, yeah, Jamin Davis as well. I want to uh, shout out all the young guys, Jamin Davis, Derek Forrest, really guys that stepped up um, in terms of injury and stuff like that. Davis, the former first-round pick, he improved a lot this season from his rookie year last year. And he was the leading tackler on the team, three sacks and nine tackles for loss, which is just great for him. Uh, moving on as well, Tressway, a Pro Bowl year for him, great year for him. One of the best punters in the NFL, keeps on doing what he's doing, the people's punter, with another Pro Bowl appearance. And speaking of Pro Bowls, three other guys adding on to Tressway made the Pro Bowl. Jeremy Reeves finally making the Pro Bowl as a special teams guy, totally deserved. Uh, Terry McLaurin as well, just talked about him. And Jonathan Allen uh, making as well. I'm not sure Jonathan Allen will play in the Pro Bowl because of his injury. I'm not really sure the extent of the injury. But I'm guessing as of now, I don't think he would. So we'll probably just see Terry, Jeremy Reeves, and Tressway in the Pro Bowl uh, this season. So that wraps up the good, at least on the offensive side. There were some more good things that happened. But those were pretty much all the highlights of the highlights. And now we're going to move on to the bad stuff. There was a lot of bad stuff. Still a lot of good stuff, but there was definitely some bad stuff as well. First thing being the major highlight of the bad stuff. 
Uh, the entire offensive play calling from Scott Turner was pretty much horrendous the entire season. Uh, Sam Howell in a game where you want to play for to give Sam Howell as many pass attempts as you can. Sam Howell doesn't even hit the 20 pass attempt mark, which is just, I mean, that's just crazy to me. Um, and there was also some really interesting red zone play calling uh, at the goal line, that one game against the Titans. You could have handed off to Brian Robinson for his first touchdown. He had a great game that game. And instead, you put the you put the ball in the hands of Carson Wentz, who then throws an interception. And so, if we win that game, we would probably be sitting in the playoffs right now. So, a lot of things down the stretch that uh, Scott Turner messed up as well. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, I already talked about this, but three quarterbacks playing this season not great, especially uh, since Ron Rivera said Carson Wentz was going to be that guy. Uh, he was going to be the starting quarterback for this entire season. That did not turn out to be the case. Uh, Carson Wentz lasted six games before his uh, thumb injury or hand injury or something like that, finger injury or something like that. Taylor Heineke comes in. He has a great few weeks, a um, little bit iffy towards the end, but still probably worth starting him for the rest of the season, saying there was only two games left. Scott Turner, Ron Rivera say not so fast. Bring back Carson Wentz for a game, and we pretty much throw away our playoff hopes in that game against the Cleveland Browns. Looked absolutely horrendous. The offense uh, just wasn't moving the ball well at all. And then we move on to the game against the Cowboys. Um, I don't expect the Cowboys to beat the Bucks. let's just say that, on Monday night because they did not look great against Washington. And Sam Howell had a very solid game against a very good Cowboys defense. So that is what you love to see. Another bad thing, Chase Young. This might be a little bit iffy, but Chase Young coming back from the torn ACL has not looked right. Um, I know he spent a lot of time, a lot more time after saying at some point, at, at least at one point last offseason, that he was going to make it and be able to play week one. Does not play until, I believe, week 13, week 14. So um, that's not great. And we're able to pick up his fifth-year option already this upcoming offseason, and we probably will. But um, for a second overall pick, at this point in your career, three seasons in, only having nine sacks for a possible um, one of the best edge rusher prospects we've seen in quite a few years, it's not it's not great. Um, really, once he gets his hands on a defender or on an offensive lineman, he does not know what to do. Once the offensive lineman puts his hands on Chase Young, Chase Young just freezes, and if he doesn't win on his first step, he doesn't win the play, and he does not win on his first step a good amount of time. So... That was not great. Uh, Chase Young as well, only three tackles this season. Uh, I know he played in only four games, five games, but three tackles is not what you want to see uh, for a former second-round pick, whether you are coming off of an injury or if you're fully healthy. Three tackles in a four-game span or five-game span is not really good at all. But yeah, so this season, a lot of good, a lot of bad in 2022-2023. This offseason is going to be crazy. If you're a Washington Commanders fan, possibly we've seen the last game with Dan Snyder as owner. Um, I'm hoping Scott Turner gets fired by the time this episode comes out. Um, and if Ron Rivera gets fired, which I would like that too, I don't think he will. But if he does, then that's great. And we're going to go on another head coaching search. So the possibility, I tweeted this out the other day. The possibility of Washington, relatively, Washington relatively having a new he new owner, new head coach, new GM, and new franchise quarterback is fairly high for the circumstances. So, again, this offseason is a lot of change. I hope we don't trade for a veteran quarterback, um, or maybe we do, but... I really don't know what's going to happen. We're just going to have to ride the roller coaster this offseason. But yeah, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Keeping Up with the Commanders. A lot of offseason stuff coming up, a lot of mock drafts, a lot of player reviews, prospect reviews coming up, which is going to be pretty exciting uh, for this upcoming draft. I'm super excited about it. And then also just talking about Washington signings and uh, what they could do at a possibly offensive coordinator. Hint, hint, please fire Scott Turner. Like, right now, please. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this week's episode of Keeping Up with the Commanders. See you guys in the next one. Peace.